Hey guys, welcome to Boning Soul. Um, thanks for joining me again here. So, uh, continuing on with um, some more of these videos I'm putting out here, uh, not being able to get out a whole lot into the actual woods. I'm still at the archery range. If you notice my uh, previous video, I'm like, I'm, I sunk down like almost my knees. I'm kind of standing on uh, ice and snow over here, trying not to sink down. So anyway, um, this video, I kind of wanted to do a follow-up on this Pacific stick from St. Patrick Lake longbows now you guys have probably seen the other video the initial video you've probably seen me shooting it i'll link the other video in here somewhere here maybe in the, in the end or something like that but um you know people want to know how i'm getting along with it how i'm liking a the asl how i'm liking this particular bow uh does it work for me is it uh, how does it shoot does it have any shock uh is it accurate uh, how is it to carry all that kind of stuff is it smooth so we're gonna handle all that stuff so number one question is do i like it no i love it absolutely love this bow um i did alternate through uh when i did hunt this year i did alternate um between this the elk heart and the grizzly and i did shoot a rabbit with this thing which is pretty sweet um but you know all three of those bows i'm going to do a video on on kind of the differences between them uh i don't know in the next few weeks maybe sometime here I'll, I'll try and get out and do another one but they're all completely different my grizzly feels different in the hand my elk heart feels different in the hand this feels different in the hand and you shoot them completely differently uh so certain things are just fundamentals but other things are completely completely different so um basically you know i'm pulling 27 inch about 44 45 pounds on this thing um i had settled on a a feather to nose technique right where I'm drawing back and I'm making sure I got the nose or I got the feather you know when I pull back I'm actually touching my nose and that's kind of like my trigger it's not even so much of a trigger to like a psycho trigger to release it's more to make sure that I'm actually coming to full draw because I find with this bow um, you know you got to do certain things you got to hold it you know with a low wrist grip like this right you got to for sure you don't necessarily have to like heal it a lot put a lot of soup you know pressure purposely but you do have to hold it the right way. Um, I do, of course, have this rubber grip on here, which helps tremendously. Uh, I put that on pretty much every bow I have because, uh, you know, any, any, any bow that has like any kind of leather grip or suede grip, it just gets, it just, it just moves around in my hand too much. So this for sure uh, gets, oh, for sure, because it's called the Sure Grip, by the way, but you can use rubber tubing, okay? Um, for sure have that on there by the way i have that little stripe in there i got a little zip Woo! see i'm sinking in the snow that's a little zip tie in there that i got that's kind of a little bow holder right um i, I move it up that's a jason sam Koviak, uh trick right there so a twizzler works too by the way um and then on this over here what i did with this dish grip is i got this tape on here so this is layers of gaffer tape, right? Gaffer tape is kind of like a cloth, uh, cloth kind of duct tape. And all that is, and it's, all, it's only on three sides. So it's kind of like a U shape like this. It's only on three sides. And then I put that on there just as a kind of, it helps locate. Uh, it's not so much to heal it or anything. It's just more to just kind of locate my hand on there. And it, it always goes in the same spot. Um, so if you get a little closer look at that, maybe. Right, so yeah. Super easy to do. I just built up layers of tape basically and I put the grip over it, uh, the rubber grip over it. And you know, it can come off if I ever, if I ever want it off, but I'm really, really liking it. Now the dish grip, um, would I get it again? Yeah, I think so. This, this looks just fine. Um, I would like to try still just a straight grip where, you know, basically, you know, it would be like this, right? It'd be just like this on this side. Um, you know, if you were to hold it like that kind of thing, right? Um, this would be straight. And as long as it's got a nice little flat spot, which Eric puts a really nice flat spot, uh, decent enough flat spot on these. Some ASLs don't have that. They're more sharp, they're more pointy. They dig in your hand, I, you know, I, I didn't like that. But this, and especially with the uh, rubber on there, it's a little more cushiony, right? So it, it, it's, it's super nice, I like it. Um, this is a 66 inch, 66 inch bow, by the way. And uh, it's a Purple Heart riser with U cores and uh, quilted maple limbs. So if you can see the detail on that, super nice. I love it. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just, I always wanted kind of like a two-tone kind of strawberry blonde kind of uh, bow and it's, and it's right. And of course, I'm, I'm kind of rehashing some of this stuff, but you know, Solway Quiver, of course, I love it. Um, I, I do want to try a, a Great Northern just because, uh, just because, but I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much a Solway guy. I mean, 
you know they make they make awesome quivers so does great northern but i kind of want to try i kind of want to try just just for you know shits and giggles but anyway um works really well <clears throat> The arrows. So arrows, I've got 600 spine. I got 600 spine gold tip traditional. I have, uh, they are 30, 30 and a quarter inch long, I believe. Four inch fletch. I've got 100 grain brass and a 200 grain tip. And I can actually probably go a little heavier on the tip. Um, you know, it's one thing shooting, you know, indoors in your house and stuff, but when you shoot like this, especially against the backdrop of snow and you can actually see if it kind of kicks consistently one way or another, um, you know, if I don't come to full draw and I'll get to that in a second, it, they might tend to fly a little bit stiff. So I have to, I have to make sure I'm doing everything right. Now this bow, is it easy to shoot? Uh, yes and no. So it is, it feels very natural. It feels very natural, pointable, all that stuff. But if I don't come to full draw, if I short stroke this thing at all, I shoot to the left. In fact, the more vertical I hold the bow, right? And I don't really shoot the bow like this. I'm more of a, you know, at least like a 45 cant, right? And the more canted, the better it is. But the more closer to vertical I am, or depending on, you know, an angle, whatever angle I'm shooting, uh, I will tend to hit toward the left more than anything. Like I don't really tend to hit toward the right at all. I tend to hit toward the left. So that being said, shooting this thing, um, it is super important to me to actually come to full draw, right? And I have to have a solid bow arm. Like if I drop my bow arm at all, it's a bad deal. Uh, if I short stroke it, if I, if I don't come to full, full draw and I have good alignment and, and actually have a tension shot, it, it falls apart. I can't do a dead release. I've tried, um, you know, and, and, you know, I don't really aim. I'm like, like gap stinctive and I see the tip of the arrow, but, um, I'm not like gapping exactly up and down. I'm just, I am, you know, trying to burn a hole, you know, spot pick a spot kind of thing and where I'm trying to shoot but I still have to have everything uh, working for me it's not as forgiving for me if I if I don't uh, if I don't you know come come to full draw my grizzly for example um, that one is like a fuzzy bunny slipper I mean that one I can you know look at a spot and you know it's like oh did I even draw the bow and and, and it hits where, where it, it, it wants to go um, just just you know different experiences this you know this is a bow that wants to um, that I want to keep picking up over and over again. I want to keep shooting over and over again because it demands that you do better, right? It demands, I don't know, it's just cool, man. It's, <laughs> you know, I like being able to string and unstring it by just doing like a push-pull method. Um, not gonna do it in the snow over here, but um, other than that, that's, that's the bow. So I got strings, by the way, from St. Lawrence Traditional. Uh, this is uh, Mindy Gibson up there in Canada. Great strings, I put these, uh, on this one, it's a D97, and I also have the same one on my Elkhart. She made a, a, a couple sets for my Elkhart. Um, great strings. I'm using a tip tip protector over here, right? Just from Three Rivers. Uh, I don't know why I didn't use these for years and years and years. Um, they they do a really good job because uh, I'm you know I'm a guy that sits there, does this, digs digs this in, and if I'm like waiting to shoot, you know, I'll start twirling my bow around like this, you know, like like spiraling, you know. And I don't know. I I, sh I should probably take care of better of my stuff, but um, so yeah, tip protector, the bow um, hasn't changed at all as far as anything. I'm shooting uh, as far as like brace height goes from from in here from inside the grip to the outside of the string, to the outside of the string. It's right at seven inches, so. And I believe I'm at five eighths, five eighths uh, knock height, which is, you know, I measure it the way most of us measure it. So you can do that to the bottom, five eighths to the bottom of the top knock, right? Knocking point. Uh, I do my own tie on knocks. I can do them tight enough uh, that I can spiral them up and down, screw them up and down as needed, you know, for, um, uh, for, for tuning purposes, but they don't slide. Uh, and it's just a feel thing. You gotta, just gotta figure out how to do it. You gotta use the right side, ser right size serving. But that's what I use. Nothing wrong with brass or anything like that. But that's what I use. Um, that's really it, guys. You know, this arrow, by the way, comes in at uh, 550, 555, something like that. And honestly, I could probably put a heavier tip on there. Um, oops. Yeah. So that's an A standard, by the way. It's a 200 grain. It comes in about 200 with the adapter in there. Um, you know, and I don't know that I'd be hesitant to shoot a 250 grain tip on here, to be honest bring it right up to 600, make it a little bit weaker. I tend to do better with uh, weaker arrow shafts, especially on something like this, where I definitely need it to kind of curve around. I know that's probably not, you know, uh, good as far as like bear shaft goes. I'm a stickler for bear shaft tuning with everything else. But you know, when you've got a shelf that's really not cut like this, 
you know, call me an idiot, call me whatever, but I, I prefer that it's weaker, that it goes around and bends around a little more easily than, than it is stiff. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do some shooting here. Um, we'll just uh, take some shots. I'm not gonna make it too long. It's already a 10 minute video. So follow along. All these shots will be anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to 15 yards, something like that. Probably not much longer than that. So, and that's pretty much the the extent of, of this bow. So if you like this bow, you know, get on Eric's uh, uh, waiting list. He's got, I mean, he's probably over a year at this point. I'm not, I'm not sure at the, at the time of this recording, but uh, quite a while. But, you know, if you can pick one up, definitely go pick one up. Super awesome bow, super quiet, great stuff. So I'm going to leave links for all the stuff below, by the way. So, um, yeah, shameless plug, right? I mean, I'm, I'm an affiliate with a bunch of stuff. Not with Selway, these guys, but, you know, I'm always going to promote Selway stuff. They're great. I'm always going to promote this. They're great. Uh, you know, jacket. Hey, buy the Columbia Sender jacket, right? Anyway, I'm going to go shoot. Follow along. All right, we're about like 10, 11 yards here. I'm sinking in the snow, by the way. <laughs> Here we go. See, I short drew that. See what I did? It kind of did one of these weird ones. Now watch what happens when I'm supposed to, when I actually pull back the way I'm supposed to pull back and, and anchor properly. Pull back, keep pulling, feather nose. Okay, so that flew a whole lot straighter. I don't know if you can tell from that angle. I know when they hit, they kind of do this because I'm at an angle to the target, but short stroke versus what I'm shooting the way I'm supposed to, drastic difference. They fly so much better. All right, guys, so where I'm gonna be standing, it's about 16 yards to that turkey target right there. Right there, there we go. Okay, 16 yards I'm gonna try and do for the bottom of the waddle. If I'm, uh, if I'm sinking here, it's because I'm sinking like this, and the bow limb is basically touching the ground right now, the snow. So, all right, I'm going to try to go for the bottom of the waddle. Here we go. Okay, just a touch high. Just a touch left. I short stroked on that one. This is gonna be pretty honest, guys. This is how I've been shooting, right? I mean, it's, it's been a struggle for me to do the feather and nose and keep it consistent, so here we go. Nope, just left. All right, so that one, that one ended up not too bad. Let's go take a look. All right, so 16 yards, right? I mean, not, not stellar, right? But I mean, and I'm kind of aiming for right here, right? So I'm maybe an inch, inch and a half left, you know, certainly low over here, but you know, that's that one's left. That was a bad shot right here, this one here. But yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing is, is, is shooting a little left if I'm, not, if I'm not doing everything what I'm supposed to be doing. And I certainly didn't do it on those shots. So let's keep going. All right, guys, so we'll do an action shot here. We're on an elevated platform up here. There's that first pig target I was uh, in front of earlier. I'm gonna take some shots down there. If I don't fall off, it's, it's all full of ice up here. A raccoon made its way up here though. If you can do it, I can do it. Here we go. That was a good shot. What I do like is I can hold this bow damn near horizontal and it shoots really good. Let's do one more. Yep. One more. Yeah, that was side by side with the other one. So you notice though, on those ones, I didn't come to full draw, but when it's that close and it's that short, I'm having a hard time coming uh, all the way. But for me, if I'm holding it that horizontal, it's actually coming off. The flight is actually really nice. 
and uh, you know if it looks good I've been going with it and it's flying straight it's flying true so let's go down and check it out all right so I got Try not to drag the tripod here on the snow. We're going sideways. All right, so this first one to the right was my first shot. And then I actually did adjust my aim over to here. So these two were the number, this was second one. The bottom one was the third one. So I'll take that. That's like a, that's about 10, 12 yards actually from as far as from the, from the base of that tower. So, which is right there. Not too bad. Let's keep going. All right, so we got a bear target over there. I don't know what this is. I know uh, it's about 18 yards actually, because it's 25 to up here, which you can't really see, which is to that road right there, or a little bit actually for the stake. So we're, I don't know, I'm gonna say we're about 17. All right, here we go. Okay, so that flew, if you notice, a little bit stiff. Again, I am having, for some reason, I don't know, it's target panic, I don't know what it is, having a hard time coming to full draw and holding full draw, but that's a perfect heart shot. Do it again. Okay. Those are side by side, you know, at least they're going, they're going where they should. I'll take you down there. Oh, Nelly, there we go. Sorry, it's kind of hard to prop you guys up here on this tripod. So here we go, right? I mean, that's where I was aiming, but I can tell you on both of those shots, um, I did not come to full draw. I did not hit feather to nose. Just uh, just something I'm constantly just, just trying to work on, work on, work on. All right, I'm gonna set you up over here and then I'll uh, take some shots from the ground over there. You can see how the bow looks kind of in profile or whatever. All right, again, so they hit really good, but they flew like crap because I didn't come to anchor. Let's do it again. All right, that's much better. They flew a little better. I am I am hearing it kind of slap. If I'm like super twisted this way, and I'm and I'm you know pulling like this, I am hearing it, feeling it slap or hearing it slap my sleeve a little bit. There's not much I can do because there's not a sleeve. I mean, this is a pretty pretty trim uh, arm, right? So uh, at least sleeve on the jacket. So it's not like I can do a whole lot over there. But it's just one of those things you gotta. You know, you can't, you can't get every little piece of clothing out of the way. I, I'm, I'm convinced that that's impossible, especially with the string angle that this makes, which again, I've done a video on this before, where if you have a longer bow, right? You know, when you're at full draw, like this, okay? Or like that. The angle that the lower string makes with a shorter bow goes away from your body at a, at a, at a much faster rate. With a longer bow, the angle doesn't go away from your body at a much faster rate. It, it kind of, you get, you get a little bit of this, right? Hitting into there, hitting into there. So it's just one of those toss ups, right? Longer bow technically is more forgiving, but you do have to deal with that string angle thing that I don't think a lot of people think about. I know it affects me for sure. So anywho, all right, that's it. All right guys, so that is an honest, there we go, steady. That is an honest uh, review of how I'm you know, getting along with the Pacific stick. I love shooting this bow. 
it's a great bow. Um, it does what it's supposed to. It's quiet. Um, <laughs> you know, it, uh, I think the only thing here is like these feathers slap because I didn't, you know, do the quite, quite, quite angle these, you know, in, in here quite enough. But no, next hood foam I do, it's going to be, I'm going to do a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all the shooting issues are 100% me, right? Some days I'm totally on, I can, I have no problem expanding. And in other days I've get, I got that, whether you call it, it's not a clicker, right? But, uh, you know, like feather nose to nose panic or uh, expansion panic or whatever you want to call it. it, it it's, it's a real thing and I'm fighting it, but um, the bow itself, I mean, it's sending arrows where they're supposed to go, right? It's just, if I'm not doing the right thing, then of course, you know, the arrows are gonna go where you know, they're going to go. Now they're going to group well over there. But again, for me, if I don't um, come to full draw, expand properly, hold my grip, not drop my bow arm, I shoot to the left. I tend to shoot to the left and I tend to shoot with, uh, it's, it's, it flies a little bit stiff, no matter how much I, I weaken, the, try to weaken the shaft or anything like that. It's a, it's a release thing. It's a, it's a human error thing, not a bow thing. So that's what I got to work on. So anyway, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day here. Uh, shoot, you know, shoot some more of this and, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please like share, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow the boning soul podcast. Um, you know, leave comments, you know, leave comments, all that stuff. Really appreciate it. Instagram. So I love when you guys uh, interact. So, all right, guys, enjoy the rest of uh, what's left of this beautiful winter.